So let's talk about guns and several hearings that are expected this week dealing with proposed legislation at the Illinois State House to ban certain types of weapons and magazines over 10 rounds. And I'd love to hear from you at 217-629-7970. And that's the phone number where you can chime in on this uh, issue. And again, that phone number, 217-629-7970. I'm Greg Bishop. It is Springfield's Morning News. And you can call in at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number. You can also email bishoponair at gmail.com. Or you can uh, find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we can connect that way. So um, firearms, obviously a, uh, a contentious issue, though it is in your rights as a citizen of the United States in the Bill of Rights. You've got the, uh, the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And it's uh, an interesting history that the uh, Second Amendment has. But uh, we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about that history coming up, and of course with your phone calls at 217-629-7970. But today at 11 o'clock, a hearing in a House committee, a subject matter hearing that's scheduled to talk about a bill, House Bill 5855 from State Representative Bob Morgan, and that bill would uh, ultimately uh, lead to the the prohibition of future sales of firearms, semi-automatic firearms, guns that uh, the Illinois State Rifle Association says are pretty common, uh, ranging from certain types of semi-automatic pistols to semi-automatic shotguns and popular semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15. And if you go to the bill, 5855, House Bill 5855, you can actually see there that they uh, have a list of firearms, and I counted dozens of uh, different actual named firearms uh, that the bill looks to uh, prohibit the future sale of. So ultimately what it would do is if it passes, it would immediately uh, prohibit the sale of expanded magazines uh, or any magazine really that's over 10. And if you talk to those in the space of firearms, that's a pretty standard size magazine, 10 or more. A lot of uh, modern uh, pistols, semi-automatic pistols, uh, have 14 in the magazine, maybe 17 in the magazine. Uh, the way they've uh, devised them allows for more rounds to be in the magazine. So uh, the, the legislation uh, would would lead to uh, the, the prohibition of a whole host of different things that people commonly have, not just in this state, but across the country. So it would uh, prohibit future sales of those types of magazines, but it would also prohibit the future sales of semi-automatic guns. Now, anybody who has, say, an AR-15 in their possession, when the law goes into effect, they would then have 30, uh, rather 300 days to register those firearms with Illinois State Police. So that measure is going to be heard today at the uh, Chicago um, uh, office where uh, the hearing room where they have a bunch of uh, hearings. And it's going to be streamed at uh, ILGA.gov. 11 o'clock comes around. If you go to ILGA.gov and underneath the house section, you'll see video slash audio. You click on that and then you're able to uh, to watch along. Uh, and again, it's uh, ILGA.gov. Uh, just kind of show this to you. If you're watching along, uh, you can see that uh, you've got uh, ILGA, the Illinois General Assembly, underneath the house uh, you'll see audio video, and then when you click on audio video, uh, you got to refresh this page a whole bunch uh, right around 11 o'clock for when they actually launch that hearing. Uh, so it might actually be shortly after 11 o'clock, maybe 11.20 before they actually go. But if you want to watch along, ILGA.gov is definitely uh, the, the site that you want to do it. And again, underneath uh, audio um, uh, house, you'll see audio video. You click on that link and uh, you should be able to watch it. Uh, but something that's interesting here is another website that the uh, legislature has is uh, my.ilga.gov. And that's where you can go and see witness slips that are filed uh, for these particular hearings. And uh, the latest witness slips uh, show that um, you've got uh, a healthy amount of uh, support and opposition that have filed witness slips. 12,196 in opposition, 18,823 
opposed. And you can actually uh, click on that and see all the different uh, types of uh, individuals who are opposed to it. Uh, and uh, some are from groups, some are from uh, themselves. Uh, so you can obviously gauge as far as uh, you know the the opposition and the support of these things. Uh, but you know, what are your thoughts? Two one seven six two nine seven nine seventy. That's the phone number here with Springfield's Morning News on ninety two seven WMAY Springfield's News and Talk. So we'll get to your calls, uh, but also I want to go through some of the history of the Second Amendment and also uh, some history of recent uh, court cases out of Illinois that have led to Illinoisans getting more rights when. When it comes to the Second Amendment. Uh, so we'll get to those things coming up here. But of course, your phone calls at 217 629 7970 here on WMAY. Out of all the things to write when starting a country, the second thing they wrote down is you better get a gun. <laughs> the first thing they wrote down is you can say what you want. And then they were like, oh, but you better get a gun if you want to do that. That's uh, pretty funny. Uh, it's uh, Michael Costa, a comedian, talking about uh, guns and uh, interesting kind of take there and kind of leads into uh, really trying to better understand uh, the history of the Second Amendment in this country. Because he's right. It was the second thing we wrote down uh, after freedom of speech, religion, assembly, free press. Uh, we back all that up with uh, a right to keep and bear arms. Uh, let's talk about it with your phone calls at 217 217- 629-7970. That's the phone number. Uh, as we anticipate not just one, but two different hearings this week uh, at the Illinois State House dealing with House Bill 5855. Now, this measure, as we talked last segment, would uh, ban certain types of semi automatic weapons and magazines over 10 rounds. Uh, you'll have a hearing today at 11 and then a hearing Thursday. Uh, and uh, we will bring you the uh, the latest from all of those. But what's the history of the Second Amendment? Uh, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The history is rather fascinating, especially when you come to this country and uh, the ideas that were brought up in the uh, uh, Pennsylvania Declaration of Rights in 1776. It said that people have a right to bear arms for the defense of themselves and the states. And as standing armies in the time of peace are dangerous to liberty, they ought not to be kept up. And the military should be kept under strict and subordination to and governed by the civil power. Uh, so really, I think that that highlights uh, kind of the, the origins of the Second Amendment and what it's really about. You hear all the time some that want to curb Second Amendment rights that you don't need more than 10 rounds to hunt a deer. If you can't shoot a deer with, with more than 10 rounds, then uh, you're a horrible hunter. Again, nowhere in the history of the Second Amendment is it about hunting. Uh, it's about the common defense. And also making sure that we are safe from any standing armies, including uh, from the federal government. Uh, so some more. Uh, we'll get to the history of the Second Amendment in a bit, but I want to get to your phone calls as well. 217-629-7970. Good morning. The history of the Second Amendment is not about hunting or, or guns or anything self-defense. It's about keeping our beloved politicians in line. People like Pritzker, they want to take it away from you. Because eventually what they do is they get a stranglehold like they do in Europe and the rest of the world where they have the people at the, uh, you know, at the bottom of their foot. Uh, in this country, Thomas Jefferson, he was one of the biggest uh, advocates for the Second Amendment. Not for, not like I said, for honey, but for keeping the politicians in line. You put a, a rope over, a, a noose over their neck or a sword, and they stay in line and they behave. If you don't, they won't. It's as simple as that. All right, I appreciate the call. 217-629-7970 is the phone number. James Madison had his own draft before the Second Amendment was codified, and Madison said the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A well armed and well-regulated militia being the best security of a free country, but no person religiously scrupulous of bearing arms shall be compelled to render military service in person. So that was another iteration of the Second Amendment. Again, nothing in there about hunting. Uh, and nothing in there about, uh, you know, uh, target practice. It's about the security of a free state. Good morning. You're on WMAY. You're on the air. Good morning. If you look at... Go ahead. If you look back into any country that they have banned firearms, tyranny follows in suit. 
it's just the way of the world. I mean, well, when you when you disarm uh, the the pup the public, they're easier to control. That's the argument, right? Yep. I appreciate the call, uh, and you know, listeners out there may know this, but those crafting legislation to curb Second Amendment rights uh, may not be aware of the the true history. So, uh, some of the other uh, versions of the Second Amendment before it was ratified by the U.S. Constitution. Uh, again, James Madison had his version. You had others. George Mason had some language that they added back in the day. Um, but uh, what about the uh, the rights to bear arms in the Articles of Confederation that came before? Before the, uh, the Declaration of Independence and uh, before the, the Constitution was actually enacted, the Articles of Confederation uh, did not specifically mention the right to bear arms. However, the Articles did recognize the importance of the militia in protecting the country and preserving freedom and security of the American people. Article Six of the articles stated that uh, every state shall always keep up a well-regulated and disciplined militia sufficiently armed and accoutred uh, and shall provide and constantly have ready to use in public stores a due number of field pieces and tents and a proper quality of arms, ammunition and uh, camp equipage. Uh, so, again, uh, it wasn't about hunting. It was about um, securing the free state, a state free, not a state that's under tyranny. Um, but uh, then you get into some of the, the recent court cases that there have been. Uh, one is D.C. versus Heller. District of Columbia versus Heller was a landmark Supreme Court case that dealt with the issue of gun rights in the United States. The case arose out of the District of Columbia, passed a law that effectively banned the possession of handguns by private citizens except those who were licensed to carry them group of residents who owned handguns challenged the law, arguing that it violated their Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. The case eventually heard by the Supreme Court, which ruled five to four that the District of Columbia's handgun ban was unconstitutional. You have another case out of Chicago, um, Zell versus the city of Chicago, a lawsuit brought by several individuals challenging the constitutionality of Chicago's gun control laws. The plaintiffs argued the city's laws, which included a ban on firing ranges, and a requirement that owners register their firearms violated the Second Amendment right. Uh, you have uh, a whole host of other uh, cases that were brought up, uh, including uh, cases like um, Moore versus Madigan and Shepard versus Madigan. It was a U.S. Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. They ruled on uh, a combined case overturning Illinois' ban on carrying firearms for the protection. And uh, Illinois had a ban on carrying guns outside of the home. Uh, for for decades, and uh, ultimately they had to reverse that because the court said if you don't, you're going to have constitutional carry after a certain time. Uh, so these are just some of the things going into it that uh, you know you got to think how courts are going to respond whenever they do ultimately get sued if they pass a bill that's going to prohibit the possession of certain types of semi-automatic weapons uh, and uh, magazines of ten or more. And uh, you know you'll hear the argument as well that uh, we 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 don't need weapons of war on our streets. And uh, when you hear the term weapons of war, that seems to also completely negate the origins of the Second Amendment. Uh, and people will say, you know, well, they had muskets back then. We have semi-automatic rifles now. They're way more sophisticated. But still, it was back then the equivalent of what was used in war uh, as, as sidearms. Um, is that what the Second Amendment ultimately allows for individuals to have in this country for the security of a free state? I will take one last call here. Good morning. You're on WMAY. What's up? Yeah, hey, uh, I think we spoke about this before. Uh, these lawmakers who are putting this through, I mean, it's pretty clear. Shall not be infringed. The FOI card, I feel, is illegal, too. Whoever these lawmakers are that are pushing this through and thinking this is a good idea should be held accountable when it's ruled unconstitutional. That's the only way to stop this from happening. It, it's in black and white. I mean, it, it's, it can't be more clear. It's pretty uh, remarkable, uh, the arguments, and we'll hear a lot of those arguments today during a House hearing. It's a uh, uh, hearing that's uh, subject matter only today at 11. Again, go to ILGA.gov, and you'll be able to watch that there. Uh, but you can also um, uh, you know, catch it here. We'll bring you the, the highlights tomorrow with Springfield's Morning News. And then Thursday, they're going to have another hearing, and I believe that's where they could move the bill out of committee and then come back January 4th to try to pass 
pass it, get it over to the Senate and pass it there. Um, but we'll see if they get the votes to be able to make that happen. Uh, they only need 60 plus one uh, to be able to pass it out of the House and a simple majority to pass it out of the Senate. Uh, do they have those numbers? Even with downstate Democrats, we shall see. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop. If you want to follow along with me, you can do so. Just uh, go to Twitter and follow there. If you're a, a subscriber on Facebook uh, or YouTube, uh, you'll be able to get updates whenever I post videos. Uh, so make sure you uh, hit like and subscribe on YouTube or if you're following along on Facebook. You can uh, hit the notifications and get updates anytime we go live with uh, with conversations with you, the listeners, or with guests. So uh, keep it here with Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's New-